I decided to find problems that people are facing and create content to provide them with the solution. What I found is that it was very unfulfilling. Is your video providing so much value to them? That breaks the fourth wall and creates that bond between me and the audience. Erica, the lawyer, is helping the audience. The company is against them, almost like a David and Goliath. My second video on TikTok, it got over a million views, but I really didn't see a huge jump in followers. As you can see, I'm far less talented, far less creative, in this presentation, I'm gonna talk about how I gained 10 million followers without stressing. And I did it in four months. <laughs> so here we go. Quick quiz, what do you think these have in common? On the left, we have a Mr. Beast thumbnail for the video, would you rather have a giant diamond or $100,000? And on the right, we have Nike's legal terms and conditions much more boring. <laughs> Here's the answer. So I was somehow able to create a video based on Nike's terms and conditions that ended up getting 89 million views, the same amount as Mr. Beast, even though, as you can see, I'm far less talented, far less creative than Mr. Beast, but somehow this happened. So what I want to talk to about, oh, what I want to talk about today is how exactly this happened and how I made it a repeatable formula. And before we get into that, we have to talk about my backstory. So this was two years ago. It's the day that I quit my job as a corporate lawyer. I had worked so many years, almost a decade to get there, going to the best college I could get into, the best law school, and then going to the best law firm. And I really thought I had made it. I was making, as a 26-year-old, $250,000 a year. And to everyone else, that's it. Like, you've made it to the top of the corporate lawyer, but, or co corporate world. But what I found is that it was very unfulfilling. I was using my 100-hour weeks to help the big corporates get richer. And I wasn't help, helping actual people, which is why I went to law school. And so when I quit, I decided to form a company called Plug in Law to make the legal things more accessible for small business owners. So people who want to form a company or people who want to have a trademark and can't necessarily afford a lawyer. And that whole mission for me, I realized that if I wanted to feel like I was doing a service to the world, I had to look at the world in terms of problem and solution. So for that company, Plug in Law, the problem is not everyone can afford legal solutions because lawyers are overcharging. So the solution was plug-in law. I started another company called Creators Agency. I'm a co-founder there. This is a talent management company, and I realized the problem there is most creators are undercharging. The solution is equip them with the best people on their team to get them good, big brand deals. So we represent Graham Stephan, we represent Jake Tran, who's somewhere in the audience, and that was, again, a problem and solution. And so, TikTok and Instagram, I decided to do the same thing. I decided to find problems that people are facing and create content to provide them with the solution. And this is what happened when I did that. In October, I had a, less than 1,000, or less than 2,000 followers on TikTok. By January, I had 7 million followers. On Instagram, I decided to be very efficient. So I didn't create any original content for Instagram. I simply took those TikTok videos and reposted them to Instagram. And same thing happened. Less than 10,000 followers in October. By February, I had 3 million. And it all comes down to this. What's needed for a video to get views? You need to provide value, right? So it's a combination for short form of watch time. How long are people watching your video? Can you get them to stay until the end? Can you get them to actually watch it again? And then how are they engaging with their video? Is your video providing so much value to them that they're commenting, that they're sharing it with their friends, that they're pressing like, that they're even following you? And it all comes down to value. And value can be mean many different things, right? So I'm an educational content creator. I provide value through education. There are a lot of entertainment content creators that provide value through that. You know, you watch Mr. V's videos and you finally, you forget about your bad day because he's just so entertaining. But ultimately, that's what it is. We are content creators because we're here to provide value to our audience. And if you can provide value and figure out a way to provide value, you will get followers. And so how did I gain 10 million followers without stressing? Well, I found a 30-second repeatable formula that works. So all of my videos are around 30 seconds or less. And they all start off with a problem. 
the bigger the problem, the more mass market, the more people that are going to watch your video and resonate with it. So this example that we're going to go through is a Nike video. The problem is, hi, my shoe has a tear. Can I get a new pair? Right? A lot of people, do you have Nike products? Raise your hand if you've ever purchased anything from Nike. It's a lot of people, right? So a lot of people might have this issue. And you see the logo right, you know, TikTok, you scroll like this, right? So you have really less than a second to grab their attention. So the first thing I want them to see is the logo. These are all problems, these are all universally recognizable logos, right? These are all problems. And I started off with the problem. American Airlines, everyone has had travel frustrations. That's the problem. Amazon, everyone has had a package delayed at Amazon. Apple, things happen there too. And so everything starts with a problem. And this wasn't rocket science. I literally went on Google and I said, what are the top most recognizable brands? Found the brands. And then I went to read the problems that people had with them. And I went to the terms and conditions to see if I could find any solutions for their problems. The next one is rejection. So if you've seen any of my videos, it's always two characters. It's because if I'm facing forward and telling you something educational, it's not that interesting. I'm not going to be able to grab your attention for more than five seconds. But if it's a conversation, if it's a two-way conversation, everyone's a bit nosy, right? Like they want to listen in on these conversations. So, and it also creates this us versus them. So character one is always Erica. It's the lawyer. Character two is the company, and it creates this us versus them dynamic, where Erica, the lawyer, is helping the audience, the company is against them, almost like a David and Goliath. So the company, right away, Nike says, sorry, sorry your shoes got a tear, there's nothing we can do, sorry. And that's repeatable with every single video that I do. Step three is the promise. So this one comes in, and I break the fourth wall where I'm actually, no longer is it the audience and me as the content creator, we're actually buddy buddies. So here I let you in on a little secret. I say, she has no idea, no, watch this. Ow, my voice hurts <laughs> from doing that too many times. But I let them in on a little secret, right? I say, keep watching, you're gonna find a solution to your problem. And that breaks the fourth wall and creates that bond between me and the audience. We're just little friends and I'm letting them in on a secret. And also what happens from this is if you watch YouTube, if you watch long form content, you'll notice that during YouTube, during the middle, most content creators will remind you why you need to stay to the end. Watch this video until the end to see this, right? This is the same thing it accomplishes for short form content. I break up the back and forth to give them a little reminder of why they're still watching. If they watch till the end, they're gonna get the result that they want, they're gonna get the solution. And luckily for me, this was a memeable thing and there were hundreds of content creators who decided to, to give their own spin on the whispering. But that wasn't under my control, so that's not really in the formula, it was just a fun after fact. Number four is the solution. So here is the meat of it, right? What is the solution that you're providing to them? For me in this video, it's the Nike terms and conditions. And I realize that most people don't actually like to go read these terms and conditions. And luckily for them, I really, really enjoy it. Ever since law school, I've been annoying like that. Like I will go spend hours just reading terms and conditions to see what I can find. Like if I get a new credit card, there's a 40 page booklet about all the benefits your credit card has. I'm the one reading that. And so <laughs> what I do is I break these terms and conditions down into like one or two easy, actionable sentences. That's the solution. And then next is the outcome. So how does the company react? For the pro solution here, the solution is actually that Nike comes, all products that you buy from Nike come with a two-year warranty. So even if it's past the return date, if there's a tear in your shoe within two years from the manufacture date, they're going to replace it, or if they don't have a replacement, they'll give you a gift card for the same value. So what's the outcome? What does the company say? The company says, we don't carry that one anymore, but here's your gift card. So that's, that's full circle, right? That's the solution the outcome, and everyone's happy. And I thought this was at the end of the formula, but what I realized, my second video on TikTok, it went, it got over a million views, but I really didn't see a huge jump in followers. What I realized is that I was missing one critical thing. And I'm gonna give you a hint, let's see if you can, if anyone can guess it. It starts with this, the company says, oh, fine, who taught you this? <laughs> Perfect. So I was missing the call to action, right? The call to action is it has to be memorable and it has to remind them what you want them to do. 
Again, going back to Mr. Beast, this is why even though he's a massive critter, he still on his YouTube videos says, don't forget to subscribe. It's because people won't take action unless you remind them. So I had a memorable call to action. It always starts with a company saying, who taught you this? And then I say, Erica did. She's a lawyer and reads the fine print, so I don't have to. That's why I follow her. And that is the call to action to get them to actually hit that follow button. And that is how I gained 10 million followers in four months. <laughs> You guys want to see the final video? You want to see the final output? Yeah? Hi, my shoe has a tear. Can I get a new pair? You bought that almost two years ago. There's nothing we can do since it's been over 60 days. She has no idea. I know. Watch this. I'm not talking about the 60-day return policy. I've actually read your terms, and I know that as long as it's been less than two years since the manufacture date found here, it's covered under the warranty, and Nike will either give me a brand new pair or a gift card for the same value. Oh, fine. We don't carry that one anymore, so here's your $100 gift card. Who taught you this? Erica did. She's a lawyer and reads the fine prints so that I don't have to. That's why I follow her. Thank you. <laughs> so I guess I have five minutes if anyone has questions for me. Yeah? Okay. Raise your hand if you want to ask a question. Please. We need a mic over here in the center. Also, Erica, you should consider doing a course at the NASA Academy. That's so awesome. Breaking <laughs> it down so simple. I love it. Here we go. Question number one right here. Wait, wait. Okay. We're going around. We're going around. Okay. Maybe we start with Silvio. Please. Hey. Hi. Loved your talk. Thank you. Um, I love the formula, but I'm curious to know how much of your formula develop after your success? Like you realized the formula, or did you like plan the formula before you even started making content? I think it was, no, I think it was just trial and error. So like the second video that got a million views, I realized that people were deriving value from it, but weren't converting to followers. So everything was kind of trial and error. And once I created this Nike video, it went viral. And then I just repeated it over and over again for different things. But it, it's not like I had this genius mastermind plan of like, let, let me get on TikTok and do this exact formula. I think you develop the formula by figuring out what resonates with the audience. And you also, with short form, like I have 30 seconds to give, get a point across and make sure that people feel like they're deriving value from it. So it has to be like very, very snappy. So I think that's what, it was trial and error and just making sure things were snappy. Nice, we have one person over there with a mic. Please stand up when you ask the question. Hello, um, I'm ex Big Law too, and you already know how I feel about your story, but I'd love to hear how did you mentally manage the transition from corporate to being a creator and really owning your new identity because it's such a big shift from what you used to do before. Yeah, I love that. So I think it was quite easy for me in the sense that I thought that being a corporate lawyer was the dream. Like I thought that that was, that was what I worked 10 years to get to and I thought it was the dream and it was so unfulfilling and empty that anything else would be better. And the fact that now I get to create content to help people, like it wasn't really a hard transition because it's so, it's very fulfilling and I enjoy it so much that I'm grateful to be in this position. Uh, I owe this guy, please stand up, please stand up. We'll give him a mic. Well, you want to start asking? Maybe. Hi, Erika. So um, basically, your journey from. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi. So finally, yeah. So your journey from a professional lawyer to uh, to getting into a business uh, from business owner and then to a content creator. So you must have faced a lot of opportunity cost during a lifetime when you're supposed to quit that job or like like then to a business owner and then to a business owner and a content creator. So how do you like take those decisions or balance your opportunity cost, whether it's on the basis of a value or whether it's on the basis of the profit that you might get or whether it's the message, the broader message that you have to send about women empowerment. So how do you do that? I think I, that's a great question. I think of everything now in terms of with my hour that I have in the day, like how many people can I impact? And what that has meant for me is my legal practice is less than 5% of my time because when I'm working as a lawyer for clients, that's one-on-one -on -one. versus like content creation or building my companies, that can help a lot of other people. So I think, well, last year, no, two years ago when I decided I wanted to make a million dollars in a year, this is how I actually thought about things too. 
I thought, okay, let me make impact and then let me also make a lot of money. So I, if you want to make a million dollars in a year, if you break it down, you're working 40 hours a week, that means you have to work, you have to make $400 an hour. So anything that costs, that you're making less, you say no to. Anything that you're making more than that, you say yes to. So I think of my times both in terms of impact and then like what is the best use of my time to make money? Because I talk about finance and I like making money. <laughs> we have time for, wow, Isa, how did you get up with a microphone? I don't know, I just have my ways. Okay, hi, no hi by the way, a very nice talk. Uh, I really liked Thank it. And like Belik said, literally remind me of like an Ask Academy course. So simple. I just have one question. So you said re you repeated the formula, right? You, use, you have a formula, you broke it down, and you're repeating it. So how much more can you repeat that formula before it gets too repetitive? Or maybe people, do, people get the joke, to, uh, okay, that's a joke. Okay, I get it. I've seen it um, a thousand times. Do you want to change the formula, or are you interested? So, yeah. I think there are a lot of... That's a good question. I think about it too. I think I'll know when it's the time to shift because the audience will tell me they're fatigued of it. Right now, it's still, it's still a good formula to get really boring things like terms and conditions out to people and empower people with that knowledge. Um, I think as a content creator, you, you'll just figure out when to shift because your audience will tell you when to shift. And my passion is creating content about money. So it's not just terms and conditions. There's like, I can spend the rest of my life talking about money to people and helping them with their finances. So there's always going to be content to be made. It's really just figuring out what resonates with the audience. And you have to be open to trial and error with that.